While I was live streaming the other day at twitch.tv forward slash Dr. Simon Clark, link in the description, a user called Steve Vagabond asked one of the big questions in life. Could I cook a potato by dropping it from space? To answer that question, let me ask another question. When we cook a potato, what are we actually doing? We take an object that is at room temperature and put it in a hot environment until its temperature reaches a critical threshold. According to various sources on the internet for potatoes, this critical temperature is 98 degrees Celsius, at which point the cells in the potato rupture and the texture irreversibly changes to be squishier and tastier. Crucially, a foodstuff like a potato is only cooked when its centre reaches this critical value. So it has to be cooked all the way through, everywhere being at least 98 degrees Celsius. The reason we don't cook potatoes at this 98 degrees C is because there's a delay between the outside of the potato being heated and the inside being heated. We can describe this using the thermal diffusion equation, which basically says the rate of heating at a location depends on how much temperature is changing in the local area multiplied by some constant, a number specific to the foodstuff called the thermal diffusivity. If we assume that a potato is spherical, which is kind of true, we can model how the inside temperature changes with a computer program that rewrites the thermal diffusion equation in terms that a computer can understand, a process called finite differencing. If we put our spherical potato, radius 5 centimetres, in an oven at a certain temperature, we can see how the internal temperature changes over time, and how long it takes for that critical 98 degrees C to be reached. With the oven at 150 degrees C, it takes 45 minutes while at 200 degrees C it takes 35 minutes. Uh, what a computer is to me is it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with and it's the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. But what about if we dropped our potato from space? So instead of having a constant temperature on the outside, like in an oven, we'd instead have a variable temperature on the outside of the potato. That temperature would initially be very cold as it falls through the upper reaches of the atmosphere, but then as it plunges deeper and compresses the air in front of it into a superheated shock wave, that temperature gets very hot indeed. This is of course why spacecraft such as the Soyuz and the Dragon capsule have to have heat shielding to protect them from this effect when they return to Earth. Anyone who's played Kerbal Space Program will know what I'm talking about. Okay, now at this point we have to make a few assumptions. I'm assuming that our potato is covered in foil, but not just any foil. This is a special kind of foil that won't melt during re-entry, it won't disintegrate during re-entry, and it perfectly redistributes all of the heat around the potato such that it is cooked evenly from all directions. Of course this isn't realistic, but until Mr Beast teams up with SpaceX, dropping a potato from space for a YouTube video isn't realistic either. The assumptions make the problem less realistic but more solvable, and it also negates the kind of boring answer of it might just disintegrate during re-entry. Reality is often disappointing. We can adapt our original Python script to calculate how the potato's internal temperature will change as it falls through the atmosphere. First of all, we need to keep track of the potato's altitude, how high it is off the ground, and how fast it's falling. Let's say that its altitude is initially 100 kilometers, which is approximately the boundary of space, and that altitude decreases based on how fast the potato is falling. That falling speed is of course influenced by gravity, but also by air resistance, which will vary depending on how high up the potato is. Initially it will fall faster and faster, opposed by very little air resistance, and then as the atmosphere gets thicker, air resistance will increasingly slow it down. We can calculate the air resistance because we know the potato's altitude and so can look up the local temperature and density of the atmosphere. These, together with the potato's speed, tell us how much air resistance it experiences and so how its speed ultimately changes. But now the important question. At what temperature is the potato being heated? Well, to calculate that we can use a quantity called the total temperature, which is the temperature of the surroundings, so the atmosphere the potato is falling through, plus the heating caused by the potato compressing the air in front of it as it falls into a shock wave. That total temperature then becomes the effective temperature of the oven that we're putting our potato in, that changes over time. So let's drop a potato from space. Note by the way that I'm assuming it starts at room temperature, so it's as if you snap your fingers and the potato just teleports to the top of the atmosphere. 
Initially, the potato accelerates quickly, falling almost unopposed. Then, as it hits the upper atmosphere, friction causes it to heat up dramatically. However, this heating doesn't last very long, and as the potato falls through the mostly frozen stratosphere and then troposphere, it cools down and then slightly heats up again. By the time it reaches the surface, the outside of the potato is room temperature once more. By the way, if you want to know why the temperature of the atmosphere looks like this, with the stratosphere getting warmer with altitude, then you should check out my book, Firmament. It's an introduction to and history of atmospheric science. It's out now and link below. Okay, but what about the core, the centre of our potato? Did it ever reach the temperature necessary to cook it? Not even close. The temperature on the outside may have been large enough, but the heating didn't last long enough for it to reach the centre of the potato. In fact, because our potato spent so long, several minutes, falling through the frozen stratosphere and upper troposphere, that the centre is now actually colder than when we started. And the outside is maybe slightly singed, but also frozen by the middle atmosphere. But you may well ask, why wasn't the outside of the potato glowing red hot like returning spacecraft? Our potato was only heated to maybe 150 degrees Celsius, while re-entering spacecraft experienced temperatures of over 1500 degrees Celsius. This is because returning spacecraft don't enter the atmosphere with no initial velocity like our potato. They are going very, very fast. Like a few kilometers per second kind of fast. So what if we were to drop our potato harder? If we yeet our tuber into the atmosphere at a speed of one kilometer per second, this is what happens. Within the first minutes, the temperature of the exterior peaks at about 220 degrees Celsius, the potato falling at about one and a quarter kilometers per second. Then as it enters the denser stratosphere, it decelerates rapidly, cooling to the ambient temperature by the time it enters the troposphere. At this point, the temperature of the center starts to rise as the heat from re-entry reaches the potato's core, but this is a very small effect. We can keep upping the velocity until we're spiking our potato at the ground at a speed of 10 kilometers per second, beyond which the assumptions that my code makes about how the atmosphere behaves kind of break down. But even at that speed, while the outside of the potato reaches 1500 degrees Celsius, the center actually warms less than when thrown at one kilometer per second. The problem is, the faster you throw the potato into the atmosphere, the hotter the outside gets, sure, but it spends less and less time being heated. At 10 kilometers per second, the re-entry fireball, 1500 degrees Celsius, lasts maybe 10 seconds. It's just not long enough. Also, if you put a potato in the oven at 1500 degrees Celsius, even for a few seconds, yeah, the outside of that potato is going to be burned to a crisp. To cook our potato through, what we need is more time in the atmosphere, which we can accomplish by aiming the potato not straight down, but at an angle. With a couple of modifications to the code, we can account for things like centrifugal force and the curvature of the Earth and simulate this. We find out that if we're pitching at 10 kilometers per second, there's an entry angle of about 80 degrees beyond which the potato never reaches the ground because it skips straight through the atmosphere and just out the other side into space. So we're limited in our angle of attack to between zero and 80 degrees and in our initial velocity to between zero and 10 kilometers per second. So to find the ultimate answer to the question, can you cook a potato by dropping it from space? We need to consider all possible combinations of entry angles and initial speeds and calculate what happens to our potato. This is it. We find out that if you throw the potato at a large angle of attack at high speed, effectively putting it into a decaying circular orbit with lots of time in the upper atmosphere where it can cook, its core temperature will rise by nearly a degree Celsius. The problem is still time. Even in that decaying circular orbit, the total journey time from space to the ground is about eight minutes. And if you were to cook a potato at 1500 degrees Celsius for eight minutes, you'd still struggle to raise the core temperature by more than a few degrees. And that's not even accounting for then having to spend several minutes falling through freezing conditions in the stratosphere and upper troposphere. To answer your question then, Steve Vagabond, I'm afraid, no. 
Even if the potato could be teleported to the top of the atmosphere, prevented from disintegrating, and covered in an incredible new heat shield material, it's just not enough time to get thermal energy through to the center of a potato. In the best case scenario, your spud would be room temperature in the center and absolutely annihilated on the outside. In general, while cooking, it's best to let the atmosphere just be a spectator. <laughs> Before finishing, I just want to give a quick shout out to Randall Munro, who answered a very similar question a couple of years ago on his excellent blog, What If?, which was really useful in the early stages of this project. If you like this kind of question and unusual applications of physics, then definitely check out Randall Munro's blog and actually book. And of course, if you find what goes on above our heads interesting, then I'd highly recommend my book, Firmament. It only came out last month and we've already had some fantastic reviews. If you've made it this far in the video, then I'd highly recommend recommend both of these books, both linked below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please consider signing up for my Patreon. You get early access to videos, directly support my work, and in the near future, we'll hopefully be seeing a new Patreon exclusive series. That just leaves me to say thank you, Steve, for asking the question, and thank you for watching the video. Here's some recommended viewing next. If you enjoyed the video, please do mash the like button and don't roast me in the comments. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.